Medical gas cylinders come in various sizes. They have lots of gas inside of them and they have lots of pressure as well. So the ones we're looking at here are oxygen gas cylinders. This first one has over 9,000 liters. That's a T-size cylinder. The second one here is an E-size cylinder. It has over 600 liters. And the last one we're looking at here is a D-size cylinder, and it has over 300 liters. They are all pressured to over 2,000 PSIG. Respiratory therapists may need to move medical gas cylinders, and we have to be able to do so safely. Remember, they have lots of pressure inside of them, so if they were to fall over, they could cause serious damage to someone. So what you're going to see here is moving a T-size cylinder, which is a, a slightly bigger than an H-size cylinder. They come in a cylinder truck or a hand truck, and I am pulling out the wheels in the back, and just you can see that it's easy to move, you just push it. Once you reach your destination with the medical gas cylinder, you can either leave it in the handcart or you can take it out. I'm going to show you how to take the cylinder out and move it around by hand. So I'm standing up the hand truck, I'm removing the chain that is holding the cylinder in place, put two hands on the shoulder of the cylinder and keep your feet about shoulder width apart, tilt the cylinder towards you and move it out of the truck. If you knock over the cart by accident, like I happen to do there, don't catch it. Let the cart fall, hang on to the cylinder. You want to tip the cylinder slightly towards you so that you can move it on the edge of the cylinder. Don't let the cylinder fall too close to you because if you pull the cylinder too close to you, it becomes heavier and harder to maneuver. So we don't want to have that happen. But you also don't want to have it too straight up because if it's too vertical, it's hard to maneuver as well. Keep the cylinder in the middle of your body and if it's starting to feel like you're losing your balance with the cylinder, stop and put it straight up and down so that you can regain your balance. So you may need to move your medical gas cylinder back onto the hand truck in order to transport the cylinder somewhere else. I'm going to show you how to do that here. Keep the cylinder in the center of your body, rolling it on its edge, position it onto the hand truck, hang onto the shoulder, which is the white part of this cylinder, with one hand, and grasp the chain and secure the chain of the hand truck. Here's how you transport an E-size cylinder. I know that looks ridiculously easy, and it was. It's important that you pull the E-size cylinder behind you because it allows you to maintain optimum control. If you push the cylinder in front of you, it's harder to maintain control, and you look like you should be doing a different job other than a respiratory therapist. Here's me in action. Yeah, I need another job. Here's what a large gas cylinder looks like without the protective cap on. If you turn the handle at the very top, it will allow gas to come out of the outlet. We actually do that on purpose before we attach any connections to it to remove any debris from the outlet of the cylinder. This is called cracking a cylinder. This is an E-size cylinder. Cylinders this size and smaller use a pin index safety system where they use pinholes to allow for safe attachments of connections to the cylinder. The top hole that you see here is the gas outlet and the bottom two holes are the pinholes for the safety system. At the very top of this cylinder post is a valve that you can open and close by using a cylinder wrench or a cylinder key. It has, the cylinder wrenches and keys that we have have two ends. One's got a larger opening and one has smaller openings. You use the smaller openings, put it onto the valve, and you turn it counterclockwise cracking. about a quarter turn. You usually say cracking ahead of time because cracking allows other people to know that you're going to be opening and closing a cylinder. 
Now you can attach your regulator. Your regulator has the pins that will align with the pin holes on the cylinder post valve. The gas outlet from the cylinder post goes into the regulator and gets reduced in pressure. You can control the pressure and the flow leaving this device. It should be a fairly snug connection so I am tightening it up with the wrench as well. Now you'll see that when I open this there's pressure on the cylinder that's the green gauge and then as I turn this handle I allow flow to leave the device. If you're not going to use the cylinder anymore you may want to remove the regulator so you'll turn the cylinder post valve off by turning it clockwise you'll vent the pressure out from the regulator by turning the flow on and then turn the flow off and now it allows you to remove the regulator. The pins for a specific gas regulator will only fit onto the cylinder post of a cylinder containing the proper gas. That is part of the safety system for that cylinder. 